All right, Rippers, it's good to see you. Whether you're old, new, or somewhere in between, you know it's always good to see you. You know I support all of your support and uh, encouragement that you give on the channel. And you know that I answer back to comments as best I can, and I do a pretty good job, I think. And I always enjoy seeing your comments, so be sure to put your comments down in the comment section. And after this video, if you liked it, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to do any more, just check the description section. In fact, I would check the description section all the time just because I always put more thoughts and ideas and things I have either after I've made the video because I didn't think of it or that I just didn't want to make the video so long with, right? And that are good information, right? Or links. You got to check it for links too. So that being said, I was watching my good buddy, New York Prepper, and he was doing his top five uh, in collaboration with some other videos, but top five SHTF or emergency or survival or preparedness or readiness, whatever you want to call it, top five firearms that you should have. And I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to join in because we're friends and what are friends for, right? So that being said, these are my top five for SHTF firearms. Now I'm going to start from the bottom up. Number five. And, and I want you to keep in mind that I'm using this, my basis for the top five, I'm thinking of, I'm the average person who is on a budget like everybody right now, who uh, not only is thinking about what they can afford, but what would be useful to them, the most useful. So these picks might not be what you think, but number five, I think everybody should have a long gun of some sort. This is something that you can shoot a long distance with, that uh, you can hunt with, you can use for uh, defensive purposes if needed. Of course, we hope nobody ever has to do that, but something you can take a long shot with that you're comfortable with, that you can not only put food on the table, but protect your property and your home, right? Your castle. That being said, I've chosen, this is a Remington Sendero. They used to make these, and then, of course, now with Remington and everything, I don't think they make them anymore, but if you can find one, get one. Basically, it's as close as you're going to get to a competition quality rifle for long distance shooting. And they come in all different calibers. I have one in 25 out 6 and one in 300 Win Mag. This one, however, is in 338 Ultra Mag. I didn't go with the Lapua just because of its exoticness and the availability of brass and how expensive the brass is, as well as ammo. I went with something that's going to be a little bit more production. I might be able to find the rounds for and get really close to the to the uh, ballistics and the performance of that Lapua. So that's what this is. It's a 338 Ultra Mag. It's bolt action built on 1100 uh, uh, frame or 1100 action. It has a bull barrel that's deep fluted. And then I had a muzzle brake put on the end to help reduce recoil. Put a bipod for making longer shots. And I have always been a fan of these Weaver scopes, not because they're the best, but because they're the best for the money, right? That, I used to get these for 150 bucks a, a piece, and they had, this is a four, let's just say, I think it's a four to 16, yep, four to 16 with an adjustable objective so you can focus it in at the longer ranges. And I have put these on big caliber rifles, small caliber rifles, and they just work great. They have a nice fine crosshair in them, and they got a couple different choices in crosshairs. So, it's really been good. They've serviced me. I've never had one fail on me. They're not the most expensive, but they certainly will get the job done. And that's what we need to think about is getting the job done and not crushing our budgets, right? The 338, this will make, uh, well, I've actually shot it out to a thousand yards, but it'll easily make shots at 300 and 600 yards all day long. Um, and is a great choice out there. It, it is actually the stock that they used on these is actually an H&S precision pillar bedded, aluminum pillar bedded stock. So not only is the barrel floated, it's in a solid as you can get platform. You no need to glass bed this or spend any extra money on it. You literally can pull this out of the box, find a load for it that it likes and shoot. The average shooter will probably shoot under a minute of angle. This rifle, however, shoots with my hands at least. Uh, just a little above a quarter minute angle, but you know, that's not the average and it's not my everyday shooting either. So that being said, that's my number five choice is a long gun. Number four is going to be, and I know some of you will say, well, that should be higher up on the list, but hear me out. These all been checked. They're all unloaded is a 
defensive pistol of some sort that can also be an offensive pistol, right? Now, there's many choices you can go with with this, and stay tuned because I'm going to do a video where I go over options in every one of these categories, okay? And that way, people can see the different routes they can go, or if they have the funds, be able to get more than one thing in that category to fit the niche that you need for that day, right? But my top pick for number four is the FN 40, FN, FNP 45 Tactical. Why? Well, one, it's got a threaded barrel and I can put a suppressor on the end of it, which I do have. And 45 at full power is still subsonic. So that being said, you can shoot full house loads with a can on the end or a suppressor and it would be really pretty quiet. Quite close to the movies, actually. In fact, the movies actually put a sound in. But I can tell you this, this thing is quiet enough that, yeah, in the neighborhood, nobody would ever know. So... Not that I do that, because I don't. I'm a rule follower. But that being said, this is my favorite because I think they really thought this out. One, capacity. They got us 15 rounds without a custom base plate on the end. I could probably get a couple more rounds if I put like a Terran Tactical base plate on there. Not affiliated with Terran. Just love their products. But their magazines are high quality. They're all drop free, right? So it's a double stack. That makes the grip a little wide. For some, that may mean that this pistol isn't the pick for them. It also is a good size pistol. This is a full size, what I would consider a battle ready type pistol. They also thought of things like a decocker on it, right? So you can just push down on that lever, so decocker. Well, it's also the safety, as you can see, and it, everything's ambidextrous on this, down to the slide, rack, slide stop right there. I can lock the slide back and I can drop the slide on both sides. Even the takedown, well, the takedown lever's on one side, but the magazine release, I can push it because I like to push my magazine release with my finger, this finger, when I'm doing a mag change rather than having to switch up a lot. A lot of people have to twist this grip in here. Now, if the pistol is fitting perfectly, you don't have to do that. And on this one, the slide stop is, or the magazine release is actually in the right spot where I can do it with my thumb. And that's what another thing I like about this pistol. But the trigger too, it is, not only does it have a single action function, but it has a double action function. And they're both not heavy, like you're having to pull a Mack truck, right? So that being said, I can have this thing chambered and ready to go and the hammer down if I see it fit and the safety on. Although it's a striker or hammer fire, but it has got safeties and the firing pin safety and everything else to where you don't have to have all of those on, right? But if you're one that likes that extra security, you can have the thumb safety as well. You can have the hammer down. You can even have it back. And uh, it has all the safety features needed. I think that that's great because having that double action means that you can have it ready to go with the hammer down at any time. I also think that all firearms should have some sort of light on them if you can. And, uh, you know, a laser's handy, but it really isn't good during the daytime. It really isn't good... Uh, at night at any kind of long distances. It will tell people where you're at too. So that's just kind of an option. Mine I can turn off and on, but the light is the most important. The light is why I have it on here so I can use it at night. Um, this one also does have a optic on it. That's kind of a fad, I think. On this full-size pistol, I think it works. On the smaller ones, I don't really think they work very well because that slide moving back and that sight picture going away for that brief second, I'm just faster and better with my fixed sights, right? This does have the taller night sights on it so that I can see through the window anyway if the battery is dead on this. I think that's important if you're going to have a dot uh, because you never know when that thing won't work, right? I don't like counting on electronics. So that being said, I, it's everything I like about this pistol and the fact that it's a 45. I mean, who doesn't like to throw boulders, right? I do. My favorite round, this is my favorite pistol. I mean, it works, right? They did make it a polymer lower with metal rails in there. One for longevity and two for getting rid of some of that weight. If you can imagine if this thing had a metal lower on it, whew, that thing would be heavy. So that's one thing to think about. But that's my number four. It's my battle pistol, you want to call it, if you want to call it that. But number three, I think everybody should have a tactical rifle of some sort home defense rifle, whatever you want to call it, um, battle rifle, whatever. 
My choice is I think that if it's your one thing you can get in this category, it should be a longer one. So this one is a 16 inch barrel on there. Uh, this one's made by LWRC. For those of you who know weapons, well, you'll know that that's a good brand. It isn't a gas impingement like most ARs, right? This is a short stroke piston in this, in the handguard here. And it's not like the, uh, oh, that other brand that came out a while back that had really thin pistons. If you're going to get one, get one that has a good quality heavy duty piston that's in there. Because if you, the thinner that piston is, the more chance of under pressure and under heat that that could warp, bend, or fail, right? Not saying that the other companies did. I'm just saying I think this one was the best at it. Now, some of the features on this that I liked is, of course, I like the Magpul, you know, furniture and stuff like that. I do have flip-up 45-degree sights so I can pull up if my optic is, say, it's too close for my optic or my optic's gone, as you can see. I have, I love this system. This is made by Burris. It's an XTR 14. Um, it's a lit reticle. It has a range finding reticle in it. It's not a high power scope. It's only uh, what's called a one. So no magnification or one magnification to four. Um, so that way it can still be used close to end, but give you some range to get out there and see your target out of ways. This gun, you could easily make your 300 yard shot that you need to make. Uh, you could probably even go further. Uh, for close in, it does come with this whole kit for, it was like 400 bucks at the time, probably more now, like everything else, but it came with the one piece quick detachable mount, which I like. Uh, it came with this scope with the lit reticle, one to four power. Uh, it came with the fast fire dot. And uh, that way, if you just keep your head up, you can use it in close quarters for quick shots. And if that optics out, you just tip to the side for the 45 degree um flip ups and if you haven't seen the new video by bug out bushido you really should because i agree with him shrike is shrike what is it called industries is making some great great products uh that 45 degree angle sight that flips over into uh 90 degree that's pretty cool you should all check that out i also have a ambidextrous charging handle on it and I do have the original flip-up sights that came with it in case I have to ditch everything because I fell down a, uh, an embankment or something pulling a, a Wahlberg, right? You know what I'm saying. You've seen those movies. And uh, I'm effed up everything. I can just take it off, flip up the main sights, and I'm back in business, right? I do like to have a front hand guard that allows me to rest against a barricade. I do kind of use a modified C grip on my firearms. I do like the fact that this is ambidextrous, that it has safeties on both sides it has uh, of course an aftermarket trigger in it and i have ambidextrous magazine release and uh well there you have it um this one also has a coated bolt on it um and uh, i did put some things on here like if i'm wearing gloves i have a bigger trigger bow i have a bigger magazine release on this side um, it does have the forward assist I think something like this is something that everybody should have. Some sort of full size, uh, I guess what you'd call it is, is an offensive defensive rifle um, in its 16 inch configuration. So the muzzle brake on the end, of course, gives me the ability to keep that recoil down as well as mask my flash, right? Everybody knows that. Um, so that is what I have as my number three. Now, my number two is a shotgun. And I know there's going to be a lot of differences in opinion here. People are going to say, well, you know, shotguns, pretty messy. You can't control it, over penetrate, whatever. All that has to do with the rounds you put in it. Now, one thing I do believe is, is I believe that a shotgun should have a stock on it. And the reason why, whether it's fold out or not, is you can, I, they're, I know they're long, but you need that to be able to control the weapon. And I'll be doing some videos coming up about that. Yes, those little... Pistol grip pump actions are great. They're a lot of fun. They do fit, fit a niche for a little kit or a truck gun or something like that. Um, and in close, close quarters, they're probably pretty effective. But if you're going, anybody who is out there practicing, competing in things like three guns and stuff like that, know that you need that stock not only to be accurate, but to be quick. 
Um, my choice, of course, is a semi-auto. Some may disagree with that. Some may say the pump is the way to go. And I'm not going to argue that fact because I do believe that the pump action is probably the most reliable that you can have. But if you practice with a semi-auto and know what to do in a situation where you have a jam or malfunction or something like that, uh, or have to reload, then you'll be okay with a semi-auto. Now, that being said, the reason I choose a semi-auto is, is one, because I competed uh, in the past and I'm comfortable with them. Two, I only have to think about once it's charged is pulling the trigger and staying on target, right? And keeping my form good. So I use uh, ghost ring sights on it. I don't think there's any need for a dot or any fanciness on a shotgun. And if I had uh, the ability to, I would add a light on this at some point just so that I can have something to illuminate when I need to and trigger on and off at night. Um, I do love this is an FN uh, SLP, I think they call it. Yep, self-loading police model. It holds uh, eight rounds in it. And uh, man, it is lightning fast, super reliable. The recoil isn't bad. It's a good weight, but it's not heavy, heavy. Uh, it's got, you know, it's got a alloy receiver. Um, it comes just the way you see it here with the extended tube on it. Uh, I just love this shotgun. This thing, it's handy. If you need to choke up on it to shorten down, if you're inside, you can always shorten up like this and keep things in short. I mean, you think about it with a pistol grip one, you're really pretty much only shooting from the hip anyway. So being up here like this and shooting from here, you can almost get the same thing. This one does only have an 18 inch barrel on it. Uh, so that's legal for this. Um, can't go any shorter. Uh, not necessarily thinking I would want to anyway, because I want the capacity that it has. It's kind of a push and shove, kind of a one for the other kind of thing. You know, you want to have capacity, but, you know, you don't want to make the gun too short and, and you know, reduce capacity or have this. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. If this tube is sticking out, why do you need the barrel any shorter? So it does have adjustable choke tubes on it, which I think is important. And I also think it's important that people have less than lethal options to have in a shotgun too. They make rubber rounds out there. They make rubber balls, rubber slugs, rubber buckshot. They make plastic slugs. They make all kinds of things that are less than lethal that if you get hit by them, you'll think it was lethal, but it won't be. So think about that too as well. Um, so anyway, that's my number two option. Now, my number one is probably gonna blow you away, but my number one option is a 22. Now I'm not saying this 22. This is just something that I put in every one of my kids kits when they're old enough to have a rifle um, by law, of course, but when they're eligible to have a rifle to put in their kits for survival reasons. This one has fixed sights on it as well as I put a dot on it. There's just have fixed sights because that's all you really need. It's light. It breaks open. So you can fold it up and it has a little scabbard that comes with it, or you can put it in their box. You know, it has a little Picatinny rail. This is a little badger, <clears throat> excuse me, little badger. Uh, it's made in Italy. It's not a super expensive gun. You can get these for under 200 bucks. Uh, you can mount things to it if you need be. I put a can on it because that's the point of this. It's a survival rifle. It's to get you dinner if needed. It's to deal with a problem if needed. Um, and it's to be quiet and handy. It also allows you being a single shot to police your brass uh, and things like that. So it's simple, uh, nothing really to go wrong on it. Um, like I say, it's really handy. Uh, it's not meant to be super heavy duty, but it is accurate. I mean, more accurate than I actually thought it would be. Actually quite accurate. So that being said, it's just the bare bones basics. It can hold ammo in the back here, as you can see. Um, I just love this little thing to put in a kit. And I think that a 22 is important for a lot of reasons. One, you can carry thousands of rounds of ammo and it doesn't weigh a ton. Um, and you don't need to carry that many, but you could have 300 rounds of ammo in your pocket, right? Or in your backpack or a pocket in your backpack. Um, they're quiet. Anybody can learn to shoot them accurately. Uh, with a 20, with a suppressor on them, they're like pellet gun quiet. So that says a lot for like a, emergency situation, not being heard, not giving away your positions, right? Um, there's no recoil. Uh, there's just a lot of reasons. Uh, the ammunition is inexpensive, probably the least expensive ammunition out there these days. Not saying that it's inexpensive still yet. And stay tuned in the next uh, hunt for ammo. 
I found a new 22 round. This one is 1,700 feet per second, I believe. Now that's cooking. That actually brings the 22 into a much more useful role being at 1,700 feet per second. So stay tuned for that one. But that's why I think that this is a number one thing. It can handle all the roles. It doesn't break the bank. It's something that everybody can have. And if you look at what's going on over in the, uh, over, over in the, uh, Middle East area or Ukraine or whatever like that, you know, they're training their people how to shoot with plywood weapons so that they know tactics and things like that. That's because they don't all have weapons. Could you imagine if everybody just had one of these, that's something, right? It's something, a tool that can be used in many different ways in, instead of just an offensive way, right? So I think that that's why this makes it as number one, because anybody and everybody could have one of these. Even the people that don't like guns would find that they enjoy this and see the handiness of it and find that they can become good at it. And that's the point. We need to start uniting and coming together and not finding reasons to have disagreements with each other. Just like I know you'll disagree with some of my choices and that's cool because if you do, you'll wanna watch the next video where I go over options and reasons why in a little bit more detail. I just didn't wanna make this video any longer than it already is. So that being said, stay safe, stay secure, always be aware of your surroundings and be getting ready for anything that may come our way. Till next time, adios.